like giving us the right number. That's always yeah. helpful. Uh, so I um, uh, actually, I have to give you a little update on Bob. Oh, no, okay. Bob. Let me yes. just can I, let me just do the little intro to the yes, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's recording. go. Let's go. Yep. Okay. Hi, everybody. I'm Wendy Murdoch, and this is Webinars with Wendy. I've been doing a series of webinars, and I'm now up to 54. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, and um, they've been fantastic and everybody's been loving them. You can find all of the videos on the Surefoot Equine YouTube channel. Just go there and subscribe. And then every time we put up another video, you'll get a message. So today my guest is Robin Hood. She's mm -hmm. back again. We love having Robin. It's always so much fun. And today we're gonna talk about body wraps combined with Surefoot pads. Um, so I, I'm not even, I don't think Robin really needs an introduction at this point. I think we're just gonna roll, okay? So Robin. Sounds good. Yeah. That's good. All right. So Bob, and what I had actually, we've had really weird weather here and I wanted to get Bob, we're doing some videos with Bob for our online course for horses. And uh, so we've had him on the pads a couple of times with that, but I haven't had a chance to put wraps on him, but I want to give you an update because some of you sort of know a little bit about Bob, the thoroughbred off the track and his huge change for him. He broke his withers uh, a year and a half ago and the and he's he was raced for six years so lots and lots of patterns that he'd had and 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 so last year when when uh, wendy was at our place we had bob in the pads over three days and miraculous changes and and uh cassandra said that was the key for him starting to make these changes and this was nine months ten months after she bought him and so, but over the winter, she didn't really use the pads. It's cold and, and so on and so forth. And so we started, I, uh, she has a, couple, a set of firms and she, after she put them on the pads again, there was again, a huge breakthrough. And she'd been making little bits of progress, but then kind of falling back. And he'd started this sort of, almost like a, she was worried he was a head shaker. Mm -hmm. But I, I think it was a combination of bugs and so on. So the pads really made a huge difference. And um, and then she also added to that riding in the neck ring. And, oh, and what that did as much as anything is it changed her balance so much because you can't just jam yourself, you know, sort of into it. So she's been really working on like softening her back and not having her heels down so much and all of those things. And there's a huge change. And I, I will get some video of him moving now just because it would be interesting to show this kind of before and after and how much the best ride she's had on him is when she has him on the pads before she rides. So, oh, which is actually pretty cool. So, but I did not have a chance to use, like in the videos I have, it's mostly about showing you how to use the wraps. And then if you put horses on the pads with it, I think it can make a difference. I just haven't had much chance to video any of that with bob with bob or any horse i haven't oh, video okay. yeah yeah so anyway so i so if we if i just at least show people about the um you know some things about the wraps because i think that if you added to it and i have a little bit of i have a little bit of a powerpoint just with some pictures in it of some horses that had had we had the surefoots at that time because this is several like more than eight years ago. Um, I think it would have made a huge difference. You can see what the wraps do, but I think that that added change in proprioception is would be incredible. So Robin, there's, there's probably people that have not heard about your wraps before. Okay. So um, if you could just kind of briefly tell us, you know, how did you come up with this? Why do you use them? Some basic okay. information. Yeah. So for many, many years, we, we used a body rope and we started that came to be with, you know, lots of people, when you have foals, you use a little uh, butt rope to teach them how to lead. And I actually don't even know why we started doing that. You were there, Wendy, at one of the trainings in New Hampshire, like early on, and we were using a figure eight out of a rope. And this is 35 years ago, yeah. something like that, like a long time ago. And, <laughs> and so, so we, we, um, but the thing is, is with the ropes, we always had to start at the back end of the horse. And then it was actually when we started using body ropes on dogs and somebody came up with the idea, they didn't have a rope, so they put a leg wrap on their dog and it really helped this dog who was suffering from some loss of a, of a friend. And, uh, and so she told me about that and I thought, wow, that'd be a great thing to try on horses. 
And because you can separate them into pieces and so on. So then we started using leg wraps for horses and then we found that we looked for wraps that had different stretch. So why would we do this? Well, the idea is that we wanna connect a horse from back to front, like through the body. And if we think about the connection, uh, think about even how often if any of you started young horses, they might be fine, you put a saddle on, then you sit on them and you touch them behind the saddle and they kind of explode because there's a disconnect that happens when you put pressure on the nerves that you disconnect the body from the back to the front. So we used it a lot with young horses and then we just started adding them for um, to give horses feedback about what their body is doing. And it's interesting because, of course, there's now the saddle pad that was developed by the physios in Australia, and they use TheraBands. And they, they initially made note of the body wrap saying that they were different, and they are different in that the TheraBands trigger muscle, like it's more like a muscle response. And what we're looking to do with the wraps is that idea that we give feedback to the body of what it's doing so that it has more choice. It also helps to activate proprioception by putting light pressure on either side of the joint is one of the things that actually helps to trigger proprioception. So that's, a, you know, we just started experimenting. And then the, um, again, some years ago when EPM was the, they were having a lot of trouble dealing with horses with EPM, Carol Lang did a protocol, a booklet with a protocol of using wraps and some of the T-touch and so on to work with horses with um, EPM. And it was really effective in bringing them back into function. So we just, you know, use them for so many things, using them on people. It can help so much about people's postural memories. No, well, and Robin, one of the things that I, I really take home from the wraps is that they're, they're, they're almost loose. I mean, there, there's very, when you talk about pressure, we're yeah. talking about an, an ounce of pressure or two ounces. Yeah. Like it's, it's more to make sort of contact with the body. Yeah. Um, the way I think of it is kind of like telling the body, this is where you are. And exactly. Just, you know, like somebody coming along with their hand and saying, here you are right here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's the idea of, of like light pressure touch. It's not like tickly. So it doesn't, alarm the nervous system it's just that like somebody giving you not even a hug because it's just a gentle containment of, of saying here you are and it's like letting them know where their edges are and i mean an example is a horse that rush through narrow gates or, or into a stall and that's often considered a behavioral issue mm -hmm. and if we think about that they don't necessarily know where their hindquarters are so if they've ever been, you know, caught in a door or they just don't have a very good sense of where they are in space, they may rush and they get, that gets treated as a behavioral issue. If you put a body wrap on a horse, suddenly what we see all the time is that horses now are going like, oh yeah, I can walk through this space rather than having to rush through. Same thing with the trailer. For some horses, the body wraps really help in the trailer. Yeah, we so, kind of take for granted that horses and people know where their body is in space. Yeah. Um, and, you know, for me, the thing that, uh, like, my, the recent surgery I had two years ago, I, like, totally lost where my left leg was. It was mm. like it wasn't mine anymore. So I, I so relate to this idea of, of mapping and remapping and reminding and, and saying, here you are. Um, and I also remember the time that Linda worked on the, uh, the swan that had lost its wing. And um, maybe you want to tell that story because it's also a story of just identifying the body in space, even when there isn't that part. Yeah, absolutely. And just, well, she did touch in the air where the wing was and it helped his balance. But what's interesting, and I don't have the pictures of it, in Japan, um, Lauren McCall was showing some vets some ideas about the body wraps and they had a swan that had also lost, a, I think, lost a wing and they body wrapped this swan and it actually moved really differently. So they were, they, it was significant that they were, they noticed a significant change. Wow, so. and, and you have to think, you know, when you think about things like phantom pain, um, where the, you know, there's a memory of the body and how it was. So you're kind of, we're kind of looking at both um, when there's a missing part and keeping the integration or when there's a loss of connection to a part that is there. The, yeah. I think they're kind of the same, Thing. They're the opposite sides, but they're the same thing in that um, 
you know, we have this mapping or we lose this mapping. And the, one of the really interesting talks I had recently was with uh, Martina Neardhart, and she talked about how proprioceptors can get hijacked into nociceptors, pain receptors. And so that was really fascinating to me that nociceptors, our proprioceptors can morph into a pain receptor. And so you're getting a pain response instead of a, a this is where you are response. And so, yeah. you know, I mean, and proprioceptors can get set at a certain point and need to get reset. And I think that's what Surefoot's doing in a lot of ways. But yeah. I'm wondering if the light pressure, the light contact of the body wraps don't also, and there's no way to prove this, it's just a theory, but maybe resetting pain to, to where you are, to location. Yeah, and you know, if, if, when I should see the changes, particularly in people, only because the people can verbally relate to you and tell you kind of what they're experiencing, is that I've said for a long time, I believe that what the wraps can do is reset proprioception. And, and it's, again, <clears throat> can't prove it, but certainly I've talked to a lot of people about it and they, that's this feeling that they have too when they experience this. Um, well, for instance, a head wrap on a human generally takes their head without telling them anything or doing a light wrap around the head, takes their head back to where it should be. So it takes it, their head back over their spine. Now, nobody said anything, but that's a complete re reset to me of proprioception of just saying, here's where being in space would be more functional for you. Right. And, it, you know, and what it seems is that it's like, we, you, I know you use it with dogs and yeah. horses and people. I don't know if you do body wraps on cats. A little bit, but cats are, and I have, I do, I certainly have used them on cats. You just have to start them a little bit um, slower, but they're, I mean, they're great for people who want to uh, prepare their cat for a harness, should they, um, you know, should they want to use it? I've used it with cats that have, um, like, have had proprioceptive issues in terms of movement and had that be, be like really helpful cats that are kind of overly aroused and so on. It, you know, it's like everything. It's a tool. And the response you're going to get, occasionally you'll get animals that, that will go into freeze. And so the response that people say was, is that they're not, um, is it, it's just shutting down. They're not, you know, that it's not a, um, it, that it's not necessarily helpful. But, you know, it's interesting because if we think from a Feldenkrais perspective, any change is showing the nervous system something else. Yep. And, and and so if we, and and the reality in my experience is is that the second you take them off, if they are in a bit of a freeze, they go out of it. Right. So it's not it's not like you're putting them there, but but it, it it could also be part of this concept of deconsolidation, where you have to actually move an animal into a pattern that they experience or a memory that maybe wasn't positive, but but you kind of get them on the fence there and then show them something else, rather than always trying to avoid anything that was not, was unpleasant the same with people take them into the pattern so they know what they are doing so they have sort of some choice about about what they do right and that that idea of i think of it as toggling of going a little and coming out exactly the, the duration is short that you're in so you yeah. know you can come out because i don't i always tell people the horse can't tell time and when you start something he doesn't know if he hasn't had an experience before he doesn't know when it's going to end exactly and so you exactly. have to keep it really short so he's like yeah. oh it comes on it goes off or it starts and it stops yeah um, yeah and, yeah. and that's yeah that's our whole premise too and the same thing with starting young horses what do we do we get on we get off we right. and we, we always want them to know that what we're doing will end without them making it end Right. And, and I think that's the, I think that's the important key is that, that you have to show them that you're not going to push them to a point where they say, I can't do this anymore. We have to stop. And I think that's what the, the surefoot. And, and I think that this idea of having things that, that offer animals choice and give them a new experience without it being threatening, you know, it's novel, but it's not threatening then that's how we change habits. We know that, right? Right. And, that, yeah. and then children, um, I was just reading a super interesting article because I'm working on the Surefoot workbook. Yeah. And it calls it RAD, reticulating, uh, reticular activating system, amygdala, and dopamine. And novel, curious, interesting, non-threatening, yeah. uh, uh, bypasses the systems that would shut off learning. Yeah. If the system is stressed. And so you have you know, you, you've got to make sure that the threshold is such that you can get past 
the parts of the brain that are going to go, whoa, wait, wait, we're feeling threatened here, yeah. so that you can have learning. And it was uh, really interesting. And they've been looking at this in children for a very long time now, actually, when you think about it. Um, and we're only now bringing these concepts into training <laughs> horses, which I know. I know. I know. It's okay. We get in there, right? It, absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. And, yeah. and there's a lot of people that think like that, but they didn't have an, a vehicle and, or they, do you know what I mean? It's just about spreading the grassroots of the, and these, you know, the webinars you've been doing, I think have been fantastic for that because you're bringing it into so many from so many different points. Yeah. And I, I think that's is super helpful. I think of, I've been thinking about these webinars like Feldenkrais lessons. Yeah. Differentiating the different parts and then you integrate it back into a whole. That it's yeah. all part of one, one thing, one system. Yeah. yeah. Um, but lots of ways to look at it. So yeah, I know you're working on getting your screen share up there. We're going to see some pictures. Yeah. I'm just going to see what I... Okay, if so I'm. Any questions? Robin and I can go on like this for hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can ask questions. So I'm going to show uh, a little video. No, I, I'll actually, I'm, I'm just going to show you the result of the, of wraps that are sometimes helpful. Okay, let me see if I can. I just have to stop this for a second because this is where I run into problems sometimes where my external screen does not. Oh yeah, you know where I've because I had them on my laptop. Let me just see if this is going to work because it usually does, but you never know. Nope. Just a second. There's an application that I have to sh shut. Whoopsie. Uh, just a second. I have to stop this, and I have to get. I let me see. This might work. Yeah, Heather's been using um, a, a hair scrunchie applied to a lame foot, gentle stimulation to stimulate proprioceptive fibers. And um, yeah, does, and I don't know, Heather, maybe you know the answer to this, what the threshold is to influence or um, reset a proprioceptive fiber. I, I mean, I need to find somebody that's, although it would be so geeky, I'm not sure it might go over people's head, but. Um. <laughs> <laughs> so can you, can you see this? Yes. Okay, so I didn't, I, I have a whole PowerPoint on it, but I just picked out a few things and I, I think head wraps are something that are super interesting um, with, um, that, that I've certainly found. And if you have, the one thing about them is if you have a really quiet horse and you put them on, I think it kind of makes them more and more introspective. So I don't think it's, they're really shutting down. I think they're more like going internal. And I, um, but so what you do is you just take it off. But the horses it really helps are those horses who are like out of their bodies. You know, they're kind of, they're just not able to really think because they're kind of beside themselves, you could say. Um, so it can really help calm them. Um, and the one on the right, this uh, sort of bonnet wrap, if you have horses that are super tight between the ears, that and they're you know they hold their ears really tight together, which makes the pole tight, which makes the pelvis tight, which tightens the jaw and so on. This uh, can also really help. If you have a horse that when you ride out they shy a lot, the the head wraps can be super helpful of just um, sort of taking them down a notch and making it a little bit um, easier. And and you see the effect rather quickly with a head wrap as is, is totally. My I guess it's going to work. You're going to see it really quick. And um, Robin, yeah. how would someone tell the difference between a horse that's shutting down and a horse that's letting down? Well, I get the thing, <laughs> the thing that I, uh, I mean, that's, see, that's one of the interesting things about this concept of the freeze, if you will, or shutdown is there's so many levels of it yeah. that, you know, and, and I think that that's where it's, it can be often really hard to tell. So if I see a horse that's able to, that's been like, like kind of out of their body, they're not able to really focus at all. And you put a head wrap on and you just see them, they, you know, taking a breath, the, the breathing changes, they're, um, they're present with you. They don't, they're not like kind of gone somewhere else, but they're just like, it feels like they're just in their bodies and they're able to focus on the, you know, kind of on the task or not be so thinking about what else is going on around them. Now, when they, and I guess I don't even totally know if it's that they're shutting down, but some horses, if they're quiet to start with and you put it on, they just get slower. <laughs> it's like, they don't like shut down, shut down, but they get slower. And so it's like, then you just take it off and they're totally okay. So, so that's where I don't, I feel like it's, 
it's different than when a horse just completely shuts down to something because they don't necessarily recover very fast from that. Right. Right. And there's also, um, I think of when a horse is shutting down, they become rather uh, stiff or rigid, like you'll see the movement change. Right. Um, and so that would be a clue to me is that if I put the head wrap on and they took a breath and lowered their head and they were still able to walk around quietly, then they're just calming down. But if I put the head wrap on and suddenly their legs become rigid and they can't move. Oh, oh pff, totally. Big time. But that, that would be like big time freeze. Right. Uh, you know, so it's really... Um, the, uh, yeah, yeah, so it's interesting, but I tell you, trailer loading, I've put this on a number of horses that were just beside themselves. Now, the interesting thing about it, so the whole thing when the stuff we do in T-Touch is we do it, and then someone usually tells us, well, this is the effect you're probably having, you know, we don't do it because of that. And so the governing vessel runs along the whole top line of the body, and the forehead is actually one of those like the sort of the starting point of it. And you know how people will sometimes hold their head when yeah. they're like a bit stressed or they're trying to think. Or get and a headache, it's not uncommon. It, yeah, exactly. And I think lots of horses get headaches, to be honest. Yeah. So the pressure of this is just tight enough to kind of stay on. And I often say that, like you wanna be able to put your hand under it and it feels, there's, there doesn't feel tight, but it's not gonna slide down their eyes. You know, and it's, that makes a difference. And I've, I've also then used this to slide down and where I first started it was around the nose for um, horses that were actually the first horse I did was a horse that had had um, um, nerve damage on the face, facial damage oh. was transported from uh, Holland and had one lip was hanging, side of the lip was hanging down and so on. And I, I did, I went out and worked on the horse and I did some touches and I worked the mouth a little bit and so on. And I put this face wrap on and we went and had dinner and came back out and, and his lip was actually already starting to come out and he had more movement in it. Now, I don't know, was it the touch? Was it the wrap? I don't know, no. but it doesn't matter. You know, you just do, you have lots of tools that you can do. So, so, so we have a couple of questions on this but okay. one as well. Have yeah. you ever wrapped a horse that has the head shaking syndrome and did you yes. see it? And yes. does it make a difference? Well, yeah, it, it has, it has. Yes. I mean, it, you know, it depends on where it, the head shaking is coming from, but yes, I have seen that and had um, success with it from, okay. from that and perspective. Someone's asking, do you think that a head wrap would help a horse going on an airplane for a flight? Yes, I would. And yeah. um, would you wrap for a period of time and remove it and then ride, or could you ride with the wrap, head wrap? No, on? you can ride with the head wrap on, especially, especially if you have horses that are going into new situations, like they might be fine in the ring, but riding out, they're spookier. I mean, the head wrap can be actually super helpful for that. Uh, it's so simple. That's, I think that's the thing. You know, it's interesting on the airplane, because think about the, you know, they often put on horses, um, they put the, the, um, Head bumpers. The, the head bumpers. And really, in a way, that's kind of similar, right? Yeah. Um, and um, I, I was a horse in New Zealand way back when I first went to New Zealand that was a standard bred. And, and in the end, after working with him with the T-Touch and the teamwork, um, the guy put a head bumper on him and then the horse ran great. You know? Ah, interesting. Yeah, he ran really interesting. well. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. So interesting. Somebody's asking, would you leave a horse unsupervised with a head wrap on? No, there would be no point because, you know, if we think about how the nervous system habituates, it, it's the novelty that actually sort of makes a difference. So each time in a way that you're putting it on, it, it can be like a new experience, but if they wore it all the time, the, it, the nervous system just habituates to it. So right. and I think that question was in relation to the horse with the hanging lip that you, ah, you ah. went away and came back. No, we didn't actually, I didn't leave it on him. Ah, you just put it on for a little while and then went away, took it off yeah. and went away and came yeah. back. And then somebody's asking about, of course, this is going to come up, as, and we'll have to have a whole webinar on this, but um, using body wraps for fearful dogs with fireworks and noise. Yeah, it could be, it could be super helpful. I'm actually, um, I was just talking to Mandy because this sort of came up and I've been wanting to do a, a webinar on the, on the whole uh, for the work like T-Touch world on uh, wraps for all animals because it's equally useful for um, I mean we've used them with um, uh, what do you call them bearded dragons and oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. and they've certainly used them with giraffes and all, all sorts of animals to give them these different experiences but yes oh okay are you leaving a jar I'm leaving jars. okay thanks Thank you. <laughs>
We do have a local milk run and we share with our neighbor and all. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah. Cool. So the thing is, the, th the whole idea of the Thunder shirts actually came from the body wraps. Like that's where the idea came from. And the same with the anxiety wrap and so on, because they wanted something that you could leave on your dog. And because we don't recommend people leave them on, although you know, sometimes you can, if the worst happens, it wouldn't be very hard for most dogs to get out of a half wrap. I mean, and that's the idea. We don't want to feel, make them feel like they're forced into something. But oftentimes the experience of having the wrap on, not in the situation, can influence it during the situation, even without the wrap. And so that's, what, what's like, when you put a head wrap on, what's sort of the average amount of time you leave it on? A minute, two minutes? I mean, you could, you might have it on a horse for five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. If, if the effect that you're having is still what you would consider to be positive and calming them and you can take it off and see what happens. And then if it's, because sometimes it's when you take things off that you also see a change. Right. It's that, that little bit of input that it does, but I want to just show you some, a couple of pictures of some horses of what <clears throat> the rap seems to have done. Oopsie, let's see. Yeah, I, I have to say, Robin, you have definitely created a lot of uh, questions, which is really fun. Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. It's, webinars with no questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, so this was a horse of ours. And again, this is where I would have loved to have the, um, the sure foot at the time. And you can see he's like, he's strung out, he's hollow, he's base low. He's, and, and anytime you touch the reins with this horse, his head would go up and his back would drop. This is a horse I bred, you know, it's the, and it's, you know, I think he was the year, one of the years we had 28 foals, but so he, he was not, he was a little bit tricky to start with. And then, so then this was in, this is all in one session that I'm going to show you this. Oopsie, let's go this way. So we started out with a, um, a head wrap on him and he's going to get the full meal deal. You're going to see this. This is not so usual that we would do this. Um, but we continued, so we had him wrapped really from head to tail. So we connected him front to back and bottom to top. So that was kind of the idea that we wanted to do. And the wrap around the base of the neck, which we talk about being the ba like a base wrap or how a balance rein will help, is this can, there's a passive muscle at the base of the neck that triggers the seeking reflex, okay? So now, then we put him again on the line and you see this difference. Wow. That's significant, hey? Wow. <laughs> this is like in 10 minutes. Wow. Ma max. So huge change. So we know that his posture is, uh, you know, a habit of what he does, but we can show him that there's another possibility. So then what we did is because then it was made worse with the rider is we then put a rider on with just sitting there so that they also had the weight and then with the neck ring. And, um, and it was, you know, again, we're just looking to get, we're looking to get some um, change in posture. So that was, was quite significant. So this is an interesting horse. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, this horse has a lot of conformational issues to start with. I mean, have you ever seen a horse that's so straight? Yeah. Like, I mean, like so straight. Now he was so high headed and, you know, People always ask horses to lower their head. This horse was not possible for him to lower his head because of his back, right? right? So when he was started in harness, I'm just reading your text. Yeah, started in harness. He'd been six weeks, was difficult in saddle. What a surprise, right? Right. So, <laughs> Jesus, you know, so, so again, wouldn't this horse be amazing to have on the surefoots? What that yeah. would do to release this would be incredible. Didn't have it then. This was quite some time ago. Oopsie, let's go this way. So first thing we had to do is bring the back up with and just doing a little bit of the lick of the cow's tongue gently asking the back to come up not from a reflex point but just seeing if we could and you see his head starts to come down a little bit and as we did like just carried the movement on around the body he started to be able to release the neck so then we put a base wrap on him and so it's just going around the base of the neck and we took him into movement because that was also it's also really important and then you can see wow. that he's able to start to change that whole top line. And then we just added a little bit of touch in terms of the movement with him. We added the wrap around the belly, which is also really good to connect the belly to the back and took him over some more elements. And you can see that, and this is, I think we did this in two sessions. 
And now you see the difference in him being able to stand now. Now, I mean, you see, I'll really see the straightness of this horse's wow. shoulders. Wow. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? And how straight he is through the hind legs. Yeah. <laughs> incredible and I think this oopsie no that just the end of it I had one that I showed this screen that I showed the the, the two you know sort of the two screens but pretty amazing actually if you think about how at least we're showing the possibility well and I just wonder you know the the base wrap for you know horses don't have a collarbone and I always think that when we use a a wrap or a neck strap or a neck rope or anything around the base of the neck, it's, it's giving them a sense of what a collarbone would be like to stabilize the chest instead of it just falling between the front legs so we can start activating thoracic sling. Yeah, uh, interesting. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. Well, and you see, we also will use wraps that go across, like the cross your heart wrap. So they go between the front legs and cross up over the top of the back too. That same idea of, of letting them have a sense of what's happening in the sternum can right. be actually really interesting. So that's the, that was kind of, those are sort of extreme cases of it, but it didn't take very long to see that. And it was, it was a starting point. Like this is all part of a process, the same as the surefoots are or anything is. Yeah. Um, now I have a, little video of a couple of little videos let's just see if i can well and sometimes what these. happens is we, we just think there's nothing we can do right you exactly and that's the way that's just the way he is or we say that about people all the time too that's just the way they are yeah um uh, and, oopsie um, just a second i'm trying to stop this stop this stop oh i hate this uh stop so the, the, the wraps are ace bandages right yeah, they are. They're, they're, and it's the thing that's been interesting is, so in Europe, they tend to use, um, they, they have these quite stretchy leg wraps, but for me, the stretch is a bit tight. Mm -hmm. So we've gone through a combination of things. We found that um, Ace and there's another wrap called Mueller, but they have so many varieties and Kramer. There's, that's the challenge with the wraps of finding a, a, a consistent good source of them. Uh, ace wraps have gotten a little shorter so i've been using a wrap you'll see in in uh, one of these videos that's a double length wrap and it has velcro on both ends so that i because the, with ace now for a big horse you have to use three wraps three four inch wraps to get around them because oh, wow. because they've made them shorter yeah. and and so so one of the things that um ace actually stands for all cotton elastic that's what the ACE oh, stands I for. I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and so, because because you don't want to have wraps that have latex in them. Oh. So that because that's could, could be pretty irritating for them, and then the the it gets to be such a tight stretch. So you either that that is kind of the challenge is finding wraps that are um, that are that just right pressure. Right. Because you can and and some of them you get just have a lot of elastic in them, so they're really quite they're really quite tight. Um, I'm going to just show you how, if I can do this again, I had to open it in, uh, let me just see. I'm going to, I'm going to show you a little video of putting a head wrap on. Oh, great. And, um, you know, uh, I, that's I, um, not what I want. I was at a, I was doing a clinic one time in Colorado and one of the horses we put a head and neck wrap on and, and then I, there was another horse on Surefoot Pads that I filmed, but every time I show that picture, people always comment about the horse in the background that has the wraps on. <laughs> That's, yes, as they do. I'm just gonna see, can I do this? Let's see, I wanna open this, and then I wanna stop it, and so, then I wanna so, um, minimize it. And then Heather, I'm maybe you can contact Robin afterward and let her know about um, the, your source there. She has a yoga teacher that uses some wraps, so maybe that could also, you know, and so um, Brad and I are um, investigating some new ideas, and he started getting samples of things, and when you start to get samples of things, you know, in terms of like wraps and things, there are yeah. so many different degrees of stretch and texture and sh it's crazy it is and you know i've i've found like you can buy super inexpensive wraps i have like boxes of wraps downstairs that i've got to try like to dry thing that the, the and, and they'll work to a certain extent they don't last especially for horses if you're kind of wa washing them and i just find that sometimes you have to be so careful with then how tight you have it especially people with head wraps because a head wrap is one of the things for people that I'm really careful about 
um, how to how to you know how to use. It sounds so, a little bit like like with kinesio tape that comes with ten percent stretch. You really don't want to put a lot of tension on kinesio. Right. And this sounds a lot the same idea. Yeah. Well, and you know what I what I say to people with the ACE wraps when they're putting wraps on is I I might use. 10%, I might stretch them to a 10% of their maximum rather than track bandages. That is the question. The problem again is lots of them are, are you can use them and you can try lots of things. Right. It's, it's, you know what, it's like the surefoot. You can try lots of different surfaces for sure. And, and they'll work to a certain extent, but there's differences depending on what you do. The track bandages are often either too soft if they're really cottony and right. then they, they don't have it, but you know what? You can try lots of, you can try whatever you have and see, you know, see what it, see what it does. Um, okay. I'm just going to show you. That's just, is great. You know, that's the thing is. is yeah. That, and, yeah. And there's a reason why we wind up with most of us when we wind up on something, it's because we've experimented with a lot of stuff and. Yeah, exactly. Kind of, kind of high use, like, you know, <laughs> Brad's like, if you want to test something out, just hand it to Wendy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Okay. I I don't know why this is that wrap is not the same thing. It absolutely doesn't have the same characteristics of what we're talking about. Think more ace bandage. You know, if you have some ace bandages in your drawer, you could go out and just start with those. And just yeah, or ten or tensor band tensor works too. If they just you know they've changed so much the the idea of wraps. Now, if I can only get this to go. Well, and the I, other I, thing is that you know manufacturing changes and what you know if you have an old wrap. That's one texture, but a new one, and it's totally different. So. Uh, I know. Well, now you see. Yeah, I put. I do sew sometimes. Sew them together. I have. I buy them with Velcro on the ends, and I the long wraps I use have Velcro on both ends, and I actually really, uh, really like them. Actually, um, okay. I'm just gonna try this and see okay. if I can. It's, it's gonna something. Why are you not okay? Sharing. It's gonna say it's in the way. Just a second. Uh, get. It's the one thing I don't that, that Zoom does not do well is let you move around on your screen. It doesn't, and it's not doing it. It and you know what? When I tried this at home, like I mean at home before on my own, it know. worked fine. I am home. Um, it worked fine, and it works sometimes. Oh, there we go. Is it? Is that there looks really like a video? Yeah. There we go. Is that on? Don't I have no idea how I did that. Okay. So this was just Mandy was we were just going through. So this is just taking to do a figure eight, which goes around the front end and the back end of the body. And there's different ways to uh, attach this. Now skids are very quiet horse. So we can do this in um, sort of in different ways. This is a four inch wrap. And then Mandy's just going to draw it around the back end. Now, I suggest to people that you do this in an enclosed area. I had somebody years ago, I did a body wrap little webinar and they go, oh, well, we did this in the field with nothing on my horse and he took off. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's okay. your up for success is what Exactly, I exactly. <laughs> so, so what you want to do is we often will start it, like we, you see how she kind of adjusted a little bit the, the, the tension of it. So if you have too, if it's too loose in the, in the front, you can go to the back and then you want to watch when you take it off. We just like to make sure that we're not simply um, dropping it to let it, to let it go. And this is a wrap that you can use for just a second. I'll just turn this down. Um, so we start with the base wrap, which is the wrap at the base of the neck. And you can see this is before I started dyeing the wraps. I dye them all different colors now because I really like the different no, colors no, and you can see it easier. Fun. And you can see where you are and where you're going. It, exact, exactly. So um, we, like with all of our young horses, we put this next wrap on them because we want them to get used to having something around their belly area before you stick a girth on them. And so we'll start, or if you have a horse that's cinchy, we would start with a wrap like this. And you'll sometimes have horses respond, with, with it, like be quite reactive to start with um, when you have a, a, just put a wrap around their belly if they're really girthy. Mm -hmm. So then we would use this to do belly lifts with. So we really have to change their experience about, uh, about their bodies, about the girth, about that area. And yeah. this horse actually is quite, this is um, Mandy's husband's horse and he's a, an old ranch horse and he was incredibly girthy when, um, when we first got him and he's, he's, he's much better now, but he was not very happy about the girth. 
So you can see that this just kind of, again, kind of helps connect the, the back to the front. So our then next steps with that would be that we put, we might have a sur single on, but we'll leave that, we'll leave the wrap on so that they still have that sense of feeling that connection. So do you need to have a wrap that's continuous or can you put several wraps no, together? No, to make no, you can put them together. It's not a problem to put okay. them together. And can you, when you're talking about doing belly lifts with the wraps, yeah. um, you know, there, because the, because of the stretchy nature of it, it's not going to be the same as like doing a belly lift with a towel. But you know what's interesting? What? This is, so if you do it with a towel, you have to do it so small. It, you can't believe it. So small because it has such a big impact. When you do it with a wrap, especially a six inch wrap. So if you put it around the horse, yeah, like, yeah. So, at, But even a four inch wrap will work is you can A, do it by yourself because you can bring it across the top and, and lift it up. What's interesting is when you, when you do a belly lift on a person, if you get them on their hands and knees and you do it with a wrap, they don't feel much on the up, but they feel a tremendous amount on the release. Sure. And so I've really gone, I hardly ever use a towel anymore. No. And I, yeah, so, so I might say fold a four inch wrap in half. So it's a little bit, there's a little bit more, um, it's a little bit tauter, you know, like there's a, it's not quite as soft and, and that can, can make a, make a huge, huge difference to, to a horse. Was there a question here? Belly lifts with a wrap. Well, yep, that was the question. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so the wraps you can either, it's easiest for a horse that you don't know to actually be putting the wraps together rather than using a continuous wrap. Now, if I can get this to work again, I'm going to show you. And then you can do it in stages as well. Oh, totally. And that's what we recommend to people is do it in pieces. Um, and like the horse that we wrapped, that was all wrapped up. He was, um, he's had, uh, like he'd had wraps on before, individual wraps on. Now I just have to open this and stop it. Okay, oh yeah, I took the sound off of this one. So let me just see if I can close this and now share and can you see this? Yes. Yes. Okay. So yeah. I, so I made this video yesterday with, a, with Electra, a horse, and she's never had wraps on. She's a boarder here. And you can see how much prettier the colors are, right? And it's not just <laughs> Robin. It's all about style. Yeah, exactly. So, so this is a three-inch wrap with Velcro on the end. And the easiest way to do a head wrap is to simply take it around the neck twice and then attach it and then bring it over the ears. That's the easiest way to do can it. Can you play it again? Yeah, I'm just going to go back here. It, it, the video seems like it's running a bit fast. I, I don't usually see you move that fast. Oh, there it's running. Okay, now it's slowing down. There we go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and then I just brought her, the forelock out from, from underneath. So, and that can really help horses that are tight in the pole as well. Just it, that light contact around the area can actually make, um, make quite a difference. So now what I did was, um, this is a double length um, wrap that, uh, and it has Velcro on both ends. It's the, it's um, loop or hook. It's one of the, it's the same on both ends. So you, so it Velcros to itself. Now, this is what I do with horses that are a bit girthy. And this mare is actually quite girthy. And I'd forgotten about it when I um, started doing this. And she had ulcers and so on. She's actually doing like super well. So from here with my right hand, I can start and just do a little bit of it or the left hand, I can switch hands. I can do a little belly lift with one wrap, slowly release it. And I do that several times and I can move along with it. And then I can bring the length of the wrap around her chest. And that's how I, when I had these long wraps, cause I'd find some horses, if they were girthy, they were not happy about you putting the wrap around their girth. But if I started at the girth and went to the front, they were okay. Hmm. So, which, is, which is kind of interesting. Um, to be able to do that. And then the, then they just kind of Velcro back onto themselves and you can adj adjust the, the tension on the wrap. So you can see what. And she's quite curious about it. Very curious about it. Yeah. Yeah. 
And so somebody asked about going over the halter versus under the halter. Yeah. So you can do either. I have another video to show you how to take it under the halter or the, or the bridle. But if you are, need to get it on in a hurry, do it this way. Yeah. You know, if, if you have a horse that's super upset and you just are looking to calm them, d do it. So now I'm going to add a link wrap. And what I, this is a kind of a soft wrap that I'm using. If I have super sensitive horses, I use a wrap that hardly has any stretch in it because I've seen some horses. And you see, even as I start to do that, she's a little bit concerned about yeah. that. She starts to yeah, get a little bit mouthy. Gonna go in that yeah. She's kind of doing different types of behavior here. Yeah, kind of. exactly. Exactly. So she's like, and of course, if I, you know, had done this earlier, I would have taken more time. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to, I'm going to hold this with her and just move it a little bit rather than just tie it on. And that way, if she was concerned, well, we just walk her out of it. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really, really simple um, to be able to do that. I just had the camera sitting there. But you can see, and I leave it over the tail to start with to just, so that if they, they don't feel trapped in it. Right. And then I just want them to be able to move a little bit and see what it is. Now what I'm going to do is I take one end, but like sort of through the front one, and I can just tie a bow here. And what that means is that should a horse be upset with it and I need to get it off, I have one wrap I have to just do, undo and then I can get it off. I don't have massive amounts of wraps. And that's, you know, it, it, so it just links, it links through the, the, the um, other two wraps. And then she just, then she just stood, then we just stood her on the surefoot pads for a moment. They actually match quite well, don't they? Yeah, I thought the colors were <laughs> yeah. And has she been on surefoot pads before? No, no. Okay. Yeah, so and, and what was interesting about that, we put her on them in the beginning, I didn't video it, and she was, um, she only stayed on for a really short time, but, and then she started doing lots of licking, lots of different things. It was, it, it was, uh, it was interesting with her. Uh, oh. and so this is where you can play with the combination of whether or not you do surefoot first and wraps separate right. and combine or do a head wrap and surefoot pads. Um, you know, so much of this depends on what, what is standing in front of you. Um, exactly. And, and making those decisions in the moment when you're looking at the horse. Because, you know, people ask me, and I'm sure you get this question all the time, <laughs> yeah. you know, can I do this or should I do that? And it's like, well, it depends because unless you are actually there observing subtle things that someone might miss, you, yeah. you can't say. And that's, so it's, you know, it really does matter about the situation itself. Totally. And I think that that's where if people videotape themselves doing something, then they can actually see what was going on for the horse. The, what was the, you know, the sort of the start of what was going on? Because so often people say they gave me no warning and we know they give warning. Right. Um, and so just doing that. And I think that is the whole thing of observation. And it's, it's the biggest challenge with all of this work is that there isn't a single recipe. Right. Right. And, and, you know, it's because there, we're, we're talking about working with individual beings and different brains. I mean, people can't get computers to work the same. And they, you know, it's like... It's, we all run our keyboards differently, right? Which Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, why do we expect that it's going to be okay with, you know, with the horses? So, um, and actually with her, I don't know whether she would have been... Those were the um, hard pads. I don't know if she would have been easier for her on... Um, maybe the firm or, you know, a different, a different uh, size, but we'll try them with her and see. This horse is a horse that came, lived, came to board with us for a year ago. And she was, um, she has a really nice young girl who's like 11. And she'd been to pretty much every riding instructor in this area and trainer and had been, they bought the horse at a garage sale. <laughs> the horse wasn't for sale, but they went for a garage sale and they were looking. This really nice horse was there. She's a, I think a Tennessee Walker, maybe quarter horse cross, really nice horse, had been well trained, was like eight years old. So they bought this horse, took it from place to place. And the horse had lived for eight years in one place with one family. And of course, the stress uh -huh. of moving from place to place. So when Mandy was asked to come and look at this horse a year ago, the first thing she said is, I would treat this horse for ulcer. She was girthy. She was um, really miserable, pinned her ears all the time, was just really grumpy. And the, uh, you know, what the 
trainers said is she's just get after her, you know, she's just a mare in the spring and that kind of thing that people don't have any other alternatives. So that's what they say. So anyway, she came here, we treated her for ulcers, had her treated ac with uh, acupuncture and so on. And, um, and she is like a different horse. This little girl rides her bridleless. She, they have the best relationship and it's, it's so nice to see it. And this spring again, she was a little bit girthy again and we've, we've treated her again for ulcers and it's, and it's better again. Oh, you know, it's better, but it's just wonderful. And she was so frightened as a rider and we got her on the Icelandic. So we gained her confidence first. Mandy rode the horse because she was a little bit explosive because she didn't feel well. Right. And, and then, um, and then, you know, Mandy, I remember her kind of saying, oh, I don't know what we're going to do because she's still so afraid. And then the next week this, she's like, Woohoo! And having such fun and just having a great time with this horse. And she's a good little rider. So she's actually coming out and helping because we don't have any interns here right now. Wow, and she's fun. super, super and rides lots of different horses. And they're just thrilled because it, they said, you know, from a year ago to now, it's like night and day. So anyway, it's really nice to be able to help people in their horses. Yeah. You know, and I think that that's the thing is we really need to look deeper when we see a behavior, not just simply react to the behavior. Yeah. And whether that's a dog, a horse, a person, and it and sometimes it's so difficult to do that because we, you know, we all get busy. We get in, you know, we're in yeah. another headspace. Something yeah. happens, and you know, I I have moments I can think of really easily where I reacted. I yeah. And, um, you know, and I regret it, but you know, what I, what I do know is that I let that experience shape my future in terms of making better decisions. Yeah. And, yeah. um, you know, yeah. we're all human. We've all, I know we've all done those things that we regret, but that's our learning moments and that's our opportunities for change. Yeah, for sure. And I always say, you know, to people, if I knew then what I know now and that, and the then could be like yesterday yes, you know, yes. or a week ago or, you know, sort of whatever. So it's, um, it doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. And I think we, you know, we talk about behavior is just a form of communication. Yes. Oh yes. It is absolutely a form of, you know, and it's a cry, you know, like, yeah. it, um, and, and it's sometimes it just takes, sorting it out like you know i have a cat that when he came here he clawed everything and now it's like we've had to teach him how to talk to us because he wouldn't use his voice right when he wants to <laughs> yeah. that, yeah. that works well yeah. <laughs> and so but literally we've had to teach him how to talk and the other day you know he wanted to go out and he started to claw something so i walked over to the door and i meowed and he meowed and the other one meowed which normally <laughs> and so you know it's just helping them understand communication and that's right. so much of, whether it's communicating with their own body communicating with another body communicating yeah. with another animal. um and so, yeah, and I think the wraps are such a beautiful, subtle, gentle way of, of communicating to the nervous system. Mm. Um, you know, I will tell you an experience that I'll never forget in, in that when I was doing my Feldenkrais training with Mia Siegel and Bud Tols, um, someone had an eight-year-old child that had CP, had never walked, um, was nonverbal largely, and had been to all these different PTs. And I, I now, I'll never forget because what Mia did was simply go over and just start to just touch him. And mm. as, and you could, it was, I mean, it still gives me shivers and it's just, you are okay and this is where you are. And she wasn't gonna do anything to him because all the PTs had done things to him. It was just, this is where you are and let me show you where your body is in space. Mm. And it was one of the most powerful moments uh, that I will always remember watching Mia do that. Um, and you know Mia, so I know you can imagine what that was like. Mm. And, it, and the body wraps are a way to do that in movement with a really large animal where we can't simply be able to be there um, physically with our hands. But the body wraps can act like that same conscious thought of, here you are, let me show you, um, in space, in movement, in time. Yeah, and I think that I think movement is such a key to that because um, it's like you can do things just standing still, and that's why you have them stand on the surefoots, and then they move, and you let them explore that you know sort of that possibility. Is that when we can have that uh, take it into movement? And I know for myself, I 
found that when I would wear a wrap, it felt good. And then when I took it into movement, it helped me process a change of kind of what I was doing. Yeah. So it's because I, I don't understand how I've had many people, you put the wrap on and then the pain's gone. Well, I mean, we had such an interesting experience in New Zealand with that woman who Oh, yeah. Had, oh, I mean, tell, tell them about that because that was such an interesting... Um, um. Yeah, yeah, it was. And so she had had... Oh, did she have a car accident? She had some really bad accident and she they were still considering amputating uh, one of, like, part of one of her legs. And she had pain all the time. In fact, she was in a wheelchair for most of the you know, way around um, the fair because she, you know, couldn't walk that well. And she came and she was standing on the pads because we had all the pads there, which was great. And she really liked the feeling of the pads and so on. And then I, we were talking about wraps. So I said, oh, well, would you like to feel it? So she, she, I, I did the full wrap on her. I started in little bits and she was, it completely changed what what she was doing and she was able to walk completely differently she was able to stand completely differently and and she she came back and it was i still have some contact with her through facebook oh, fun. yeah and and she's used it in her classroom with some um, kids but um she was looking for anything that might help her not have to have the leg amputated because the surgeon didn't also want to do it. Uh, but it made, it really had a huge impact on her balance, like immediately and her pain. Yep. Like uh, it was, it was immediate. And that's, uh, that's the part that, you know, you can't really explain, but it doesn't matter if it helps, if it helps somebody. Yeah. Great. But that, the, that's that piece that Martina talked about the nociceptor, mm. the proprioceptors becoming nociceptors. It starts to make more sense. Yeah, yeah. They go from where you are in space to, to pain. And the other person I remember clearly at Equidays was the woman who had gone over and there's um there's a TheraBand material. Cross yeah. Body yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. Yeah. Right? And she yeah. had gone over and experienced that. And then she came over and you put a, a just a body wrap on her. And the comment that she made was, was I think what the real difference is in that that one put compression on her. Yeah, it was compressing her and she had to actually work against the compression, whereas the body wraps were just making contact to show her where she was. And and um, I don't know if you you probably remember her. Um, yeah. Yeah. But what she said was in the end that the body wrap was was much more effective for her because it wasn't putting pressure on her because she was another one that had injuries, if I recall. Yeah. Yeah. She had pain and, and she had pain. And so it was it was like. Yeah, I think that that is one of the things that does make a huge difference. If you have pain, it's it's going to be um, you, compression may make it worse. Right, it may. You know, it's and, and so for her, it made a big difference. It's like everything for one person, something's going to be um, helpful, but I I don't think you're going to do any harm. And that's the thing that I want to look at is is not not to do harm and somebody was mentioning about of uh, heather was about uh, dementia patients and the gentle touch yeah. um it's the head wraps actually on some dementia patients have been have been really ha ha helpful with like sundowner syndrome and so on when they're feeling super agitated yeah. and it's um it's again it's really simple and and i i like things kind of that are simple oh, so wow. Yeah. Um, uh, ask, did you yeah. see that question? Okay, I'll let you answer it. Uh, sorry, offering surefoot or a ball. Sorry, what? Um, do you, have you oh, ever oh, seen I see. that initiate well, engagement? They want the band. They see them, and they want them. Um. Mm, could I say that? I don't know that I could say that. I don't know that I could um, say that they would kind of. I. I mean, they'll certainly become sort quiet when you put them on like as you're putting them on like so that it's that that so can be let you put them on yeah yeah uh, yeah for sure um and certainly um well oh yeah that's interesting the the person about the reaching in the um in the forest that's true and wearing a wearing a wrap remember at the advanced training here i was gonna bring that yes. up oh, so interesting all right you tell them that story well so a, a woman was on the course and she really she really struggles with her own balance she's quite tall and and her head is quite forward and so she was very uncoordinated and she um uh, when we wrapped her, because she went through Wendy's trail course, and that was pretty interesting. She really, really struggled through it. And when I, I actually ended up putting it like from the head wrap and then a full body wrap, she went from being super forward to being like upright. 
I can upgrade. Walk through the at, and then she could walk through the balance train trail really easily. Yeah. Um, if I I'm, somewhere. Like, yeah. Well, like actually, I, I want to just see if I have this still on my. But it was it was within desktop. Um, oh, I mean, it wasn't like she no. was body wrap for any length of time. We put it on and put her back in the balance trail, and the difference in her balance was astounding. Oh, absolutely. Um, I want to show you. I'm gonna. I think I'll be able to bring this up. Okay, so this was uh, a person who uh, I've known for a long time, and this is honestly how she stands. Oh wow, that's that is her natural you know, really hanging off her hips that she feels straight when she's right there, right? So we put a body wrap on her, said nothing, and that was the difference. Wow. So that was, and she's still a little bit like, she, you know, she's sure. a little bit behind, but but yeah. from but from here right. to here. <laughs> yeah, just look at where her shoulder, if you drop a yeah. plumb line from yeah. her shoulder, from there. Or from her ear down through the shoulder, Yep. she's she's you can see that she's a little bit behind she, her hips are still a little bit forward but compared to this yeah where she her shoulder is like exactly that's what like, about. like drop back to yeah forward the counter the the yeah. upper body being so far back yeah so uh, that was that was that was quite interesting and um uh, Ileana asked about Parkinson's we have a uh, practitioner in South Africa whose husband has Parkinson's and she found that a head wrap and actually the shrug wrap, which just goes kind of a figure eight around the shoulders. Um, I'll show you, actually. <laughs> I'll show you, just a second. Let me just see if I can show you how to do this. Um, and he stood, he stood straight. Wow. Like he went from being completely bent over. So if I take this kind of under one arm, it's going across my back in a diagonal and I flip it over the same side and I bring it up and fasten it. And now, the, you know, the, um, I don't know, is it on Facebook or somewhere? There are advertisements for things to straighten you up. <laughs> I know, I know. And so I just want you to talk about the difference between <laughs> what this is and- Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so this is just like here. It's like not tight. In fact, most people or many people say, oh, I want this tighter. And, you know, there may be a time when you, for a short period of time, you might pay, can make it a little bit tighter. But I promise you that most of the time I found that with people who want it tighter, they only want it tighter for a little bit and then they want it to be looser. And so what I say to people is just put it on and even over your clothes, it doesn't, you know, that's, it, it has a huge impact. If you sit at the computer a lot and your shoulders get sore, your arm gets sore, um, the is that like this little sense of opening, because that's all this is doing, will make you, helps get your head back too from all this kind of forwardness that when we're spending so much time on our computers. And, or if you're using the mouse and your shoulders are really sore, when uh, Mandy, we were doing a, making a brochure for our last celebration. And she was getting neck pain and shoulder pain. And she said, I think I'll just try a wrap. And it just took, uh, uh, just took it away. I'm just gonna turn around. Somebody asked if it crossed over my back. Oh, that? good color contrast yeah. too. Very yeah. Well. yeah, that's the other <laughs> thing. So uh, the ACE wraps, somebody asked about where I get them. So um, I was getting them from a company in the States called PharmaPak, um, cause trying to buy them in in uh, bulk is they're, 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 it's not that easy to do. Um, now they're not selling. They're only I don't know. They're only selling to stores or something. Um, so we use. Um, so we do try to get ACE wraps, and then the other wrap I use is this. This is a. This is like the long wrap that I was using, but it's a. It's just a two inch wrap, and I use that. I don't know if I can put a head wrap on myself. With your headset. With my hair fit, headset on, yeah, that's going to be interesting. Uh, try it. I can probably do it. Is it comes around? Oh, that'll look very cool. Look yeah. at this. <laughs> and then around my head. And then the ideal thing about the Velcro is it just sits here, so that I put it upside down. And it's and it's but it, again it's not tight. But for people that get headaches, yeah, hippie, yeah, it's um, people who get headaches. Um, 
and a lot of times our headaches come from where our head is sitting on our spine. Yeah. And, and so it's that reminder to say, oh yeah, I can actually, you know, sit up straight. So, so there's, it's fun. There's lots of things that, uh, that you can do with it. I don't know if there's another question. Um, yeah, it's crossed on my back. Yes. So, um, we do have, I have the, I've done all the, Mandy and I have done three wrap books for pets and dogs and horses, or people rather. Horses you have them there, people. you can hold one up so we can see No, it. don't think so. <laughs> uh, you have a picture of it on your laptop. We did see it at one point. Uh, yeah, I did have a picture of it on the laptop. The, um, but the, um, they're on our, on our website, ttouch.ca. We have them in, um, yeah, so ttouch.ca. And we have them on as PDF downloads. That's the easiest way for oh, people great, to, great. to get them because they, it's shipping gets, you know, postage and so on. What is it? It's tea I'll just put it in the comments. It's yeah. Ttouch.ca is where we have. And they, uh, uh, they're also carrying Surefoot pads in Canada. So it makes getting yeah. pads a lot easier because they're, uh, they've handled all the import and the duties and all that great stuff before. Right. You. Yeah. Shipping from the States to Canada is always a fascinating experience. <laughs> yes. Well, and now we used to drive down to the States and pick stuff up, but the border's still closed, so I don't know oh, when that's going to happen. Oh, yeah. I don't know when it'll open. I'm not sure. <laughs> it's, so, anyhow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so we'll get, um, if you go, like, our website does have some things, and you'll have this, uh, you know, we've got this, they, they can refer to the video. And um, so are we planning, a, we were supposed to do a Surefoot pad um, for the uh a surefoot clinic here next weekend but we've canceled it um or we postponed it basically we'll do something we'll do something later but you also have various people in ontario different, ontario is where i guess most of the other people are that are using right, them right and, a, a workshop at um cheryl gibson's equipo right. a lot of her practitioners to do yeah that. so all right oh, and if you haven't been to the new website surefootequine.com we're filling in um the practitioners as we speak um it's the site's got a lot of great information all the webinars are listed there and you can register for all the other webinars directly from the link in the calendar on the website right yeah yeah cool very yeah. cool well this was fun again wendy as always robin and we'll have <laughs> another topic just so we can do this again <laughs> Sounds I have, good. I have my regulars Sounds good. I really enjoy visiting with. Um, yeah. A picture from my garden today. This is my lamb's ear and one of my favorite peonies. I, I've forgotten what it's called over there. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, the garden. Looks great. It's doing great. And I, I have kidding. to have not caught up yet from the, from the past four years, but I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> There's no choice, right? <laughs> great. It's, it's how I go and, and discharge from the day. It's where yeah. I just gets to. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, thank you cool. everybody for joining. All right. Thank you, Robin. It's a pleasure as always. And tomorrow my guest is Janet Varhouse and we're going to talk about how the body heals. So stay cool. for that one. Right. Good. Uh, and thank you all for tuning in. Thanks. Bye. Bye.